some ways but that's at least it's pay at least it pays well but yeah going for the cheap labor aren't they with that move Yeah, definitely better to know in advance. <laughs> Another three years, hmm. Eligible for retirement. What is it that you do then, rerun? That's monotonous. Right, put a little more in there. Uh, that bit's not quite opaque. Okay. I'm assembling, calibrating, and testing safety valves. It's definitely a job that requires concentration and precision. A safety valve is not something you'd want to be faulty. No. <laughs> no, it is not. Okay. Right, I'm gonna make a wash. I've got a darker brown and I'm gonna make a wash. Um, so we're gonna use a mix of this and this one. I happen to know that these mix quite well for a good dark brown wash. So we'll add a little bit of that in there. And a drop of that one. some water. Quite a bit of water. I don't want the wash to be overpowering. That's good. Then we'll see how much of this we can get to sink into the recesses. It's okay that it's a little bit glazy. Because this, this is all in shadow anyway. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
You've got to meet safety standards, haven't you? So you've got to test it enough to make sure that it meets those standards. Okay. Which is quite a timely process, I imagine, as well. There we go. So when I do my washers, I tend to pull it so it will build up against the ridges. So it probably, so like here, it built up quite a bit. We'll have to take some of it out because there's a little bit too much there. But it's built up against the ridge, so it adds extra shadow there. So give that a rinse. Um, we'll also add some highlighting to this as well. But we are at a good so we'll highlight this section on the front here with a lighter lighter brown. Put that to one side. Hmm. Okay. So I have um, a lighter one. So these are actually part of a triad that I got, which are South American Flash. They're pretty good. Uh, when used as flesh tones, they come out like that. Which is pretty convincing. That's pretty good flesh tones. Um, obviously, we're not going for flesh tones on the bug as such. Uh, but we are going for the sort of browns. So that way we've got it matching that. So I might give it a light purple wash as well, actually. Because it's kind of got a bit of a purpley blue to the picture. So a little purple tint to the brown. Right, so I'm going to lighten the upper end. Yeah, <laughs> these are the only three that I've got so far. I got these from an asset drop, um, along with the tutorial tile. Um, but yeah, they came out really good. I might have a look at their flesh tone, more of their flesh tones as well. Um, they have a really nice uh, consistency. I was quite surprised. They're very smooth paints. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the flip lid paint tops anyway. I prefer dropper bottles, but... They're just easier to work with a lot of the time, but I don't I don't mind them too much. Um, I think there's the inner lip is not big enough. In my opinion. I don't know if you find that as well. But I've, that's that's my main complaint with the lids. That inner lip is tiny. So going to add in a little bit of bone white because I do so the sort of beak like thing he's got does have some lava effects <laughs> yeah 
yeah, you kind of have to hammer on those lids in order to get them to close, don't you? <laughs> and then you have to try and force them open so much that the, the top sort of flips up and you end up splattered with paint. I have a couple of GW paints. I do not have many. Um, I was actually on the hunt for a decent white it's like the holy grail decent white so the vallejo one wasn't doing it for me um i'd already tried army painter and was not so keen on them so i bought the this one the white scar and oh just the the lids are terrible and it's not even that good of a paint it's really annoying it's 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 not very good paint really um but these days my favorite is pure white from instar that thing covers so well it's such a good paint Yeah, they they've become such a go to in our house. They're they're brilliant paints. But the white is is very good. I can get great coverage with that. And it's a nice it's a nice clean white as well. So we've got some lava-like edging and some lava-like patterns. So I'm going to get some white out so we can add in some of our... I'm not going to add in all the patterning because it's, it's the wrong... It's not chunky enough for the artwork to get all the patterning in. But we can definitely add in some of the edging. along here I'm going to add in this and use the white to really brighten up the edge so I'm bringing it forward as well it's down into the edge we're doing it at an angle. Just feather that edge a little bit. There we go. Smooths it out a bit. And then we can go back in with the white again. And this time I'm going to sweep it along the edge. So we're increasing the opacity of the white. Do the same on that side as well. See, I didn't go as high up with the white on that side, I don't think. So I'll just feather that out a little bit more. There we go. Um, and I think we'll do... Do it like this. And we'll make those uh, pure red.
like that. Put a little bit there as well. We'll add in some darker tone around it to help uh, emphasize the lava tones. Let's get our orange. Just gently put that in along there. Along that. And then I want yellow, so finish it off with the pure yellow, which I'm just going to run along the edge. Like that. And I think we'll use some swamp grey to darken around the lava flows on the sort of beak, for want of a better term. Now we did use this on the base, so we can see what it looks like on the base already. It's quite dark. We are going to lighten up the base. The idea is to try and leave behind some of the pattern that we created. Just get a touch more on the brush. I'm trying to keep it gentle as well so it's not quite as heavy as the base in terms of the saturation. We're going the opposite way this time as well. We're brushing in away from the edge. Like that. It doesn't have to be perfect or even. This is a mutated creature, essentially. that's helped to emphasize the uh, lava tones. Add another coat in. So we're going a bit further in this time. And creating a transition and building it up. So the same down the middle one. This is this is the tricky one because it's quite small. There we go. This one wants a little bit more work as well. Go a bit further back. I'm going to make an even darker, I think we'll make a darker wash for underneath as well. So it has worked quite effectively, but I think it needs a bit more. So we're actually going to make up, I've got an idea. I'm actually going to use 
this one it's a dark gray and that'll really tone down the underside um, I mean it is all in shadow but it should leave enough of the brown coming through so layer it on we're going to go quite heavy Be really careful around there. We don't want to catch the lava. Get around the legs. Under the belly. All the way down if we can. This leg. I'm not too worried about getting it on the turbo dork sections because it's it's not it'll not show very much on that to be honest. We're not doing the feet, we're just doing under the legs. It's getting there as well. can get in here and darken up that too there we go so that's darkened up the underside quite a lot now which also helps to enhance that that fieriness around the face so one final thing on the face that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually glaze over the whole thing in an, a light orange because it softens it and it gives it a bit of a glow as well onto the rest of the face. Now I didn't actually add in anywhere for eyes. I meant to drill some little holes into it, but that's all right because we can actually just dot those on. Um, but we do want to Maybe add some fiery effects to the feet. And I think we maybe want to add in down that ridge. There's a, there's a ridge down the back. It's very hard to see at present because it's not painted. So then we're going to add some white down in there as well. That's going to be tricky, but it will add a nice flow of larvary effects down there. I think we'll go with red down there, but we want to add in the white. Um, that's not white, that's grey. <laughs> we want to add in the white first. There we go. That's definitely white this time. Gently bring it in down there. go so now you can definitely see that there's like a a join between the wings so obviously uh, rhino beetles have wings so that's what that is it's where the carapace splits and they would swing round out to the side and the wings would open out they'd also come up slightly as well um, but I can imagine that under there he's got this big red larvary looking body. Maybe his wings aren't very functional anymore as well. Maybe this chap can't fly. 
now that he's been corrupted by the Tempest. So I've added some little white dots. We're going to use this to build colour on for the eyes. Um, I think we're going to add in a little extra, no wings, just a face that's howling. Gaping more needs to avoid a fire and lost socks. Lost socks? Hmm. <laughs> Now, I happen to know that this particular turbo dog looks quite swanky as a highlight. So we're going to highlight some of the carapace with this. Let me get my metallics brush. Add a couple of drops to the palette if we can get it out that'd be great apparently it's all dried in there let me just grab a pin always have a pin on hand for degunking bottle tops there we go it's oozing now that's it put that back on there okay give the brush a bit of a wash I'm going to add in some highlights along here, around the edge of this larvae section. I'm not too worried about the shift that this provides, so I don't need to worry about going in the same direction. Apparently that's the thing that you need to do when using them as a shifter and brushing them on. Uh, but I'm just adding spots of, of brightness to the carapace with this, so. So just try to pick out some of the details with it, really. We'll go around this larvae section here as well. Try and smooth that out a little bit. There we go. It's a bit smoother. Just add a little more on there. Uh, the Tempest is supposed to be evil. I mean, this is a greater evil than being forced to choose one foot to get cold. Ah. Okay. So the Tempest is actually evil. Hmm. Ah. Don't anger the Tempest. The Tempest will burn you. Or freeze you. Or electrocute you. Or whatever element it happens to be embodying at any given time. <laughs> so there we go. So, these, so this mother load is actually adding some really nice highlights. To our carapace, giving it a bit of a shine that it didn't have before. A different kind of shine out of it in there. 
I'm applying it quite thinly. I don't want too much. We don't want to eradicate the uh, shift color that we had previously. We do want to add a little bit of brightness to it, like so. A little bit there as well. I want to add in the section there. So along these ridges here, maybe a little bit there. A little bit along that one too. So there we go. We've added in some extra highlighting on the carapace. It's given it a much more of a glisten. And that's what the mother load has done. It's added in that extra glisten, made the carapace a bit shinier. I'm quite happy with that. Okay. I'm going to do another coat on my dots. So we're going for more opacity there. That one's, that one's larger on that side, so we'll make this a bit bigger as well. a little more red into the middle band here just a little in the middle right and then its feet are yellow at the bottom so we'll paint down with the red I'm being pretty rough with this because it doesn't need to be tidy because it is basically flaming. The red covers the brown better than it does over the carapace. So there we go. Count for the angle there a little bit too and bring it up slightly along there. Down this side. So we'll, we'll go over again with some orange and some yellow. They'll get brighter as we go down to the floor. I think in order to make this stand out quite well, we're going to go with a fairly, I think we might go with a bit of green on the base because it will make all the reds stand out quite nicely. So if you see in the artwork, this is colour theory, <laughs> see in the artwork um, it's surrounded by green which actually makes the red stand out quite well. It actually emphasises the sort of uh, reddish orange glow of the lava beetle. And we're going to try and do the same thing on the base. So we're going to go with some green. Um, I'm going to mix some greens.
don't want to use my acid green because it's too too much for what I want. So I'm going to use this one instead, which is uh, pure, apparently it's pure green with pure green, ironically. <laughs> um, but this one is um, an ammo mig paint. So we're going to combine these two to give ourselves a, a lighter green to do the base with. Now you may be wondering why I did the uh, swamp grey initially, but actually the swamp grey has some green in it, so it works quite well. He does have a bit of a warm glow, it's just like that. My hand, if your hands are feeling a bit cold, you can just oh. <laughs> hands by the by the bug. I'll stick a marshmallow on his one of his spines. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not sure it would uh, provide the necessary effect if I stuck a marshmallow on one of the spines. Thank you very much for the raid, OK Charms. How are you doing and how was your stream? Thank you for the follow as well. <laughs> Charms raid. It's a, definitely a charming raid. Definitely. So how was your stream? And what were you streaming? I'm not familiar with you, I don't think, so what were you streaming? Maybe I do know you and I don't realise. <laughs> Right. Bigger brush. Otherwise we'll never cover the base. Well, that's made a nice green. I'm going to have to remember that for next time. It's a very bright, rich green. I like that. Stream was good. Ah, Hollow Knight. Mmm. And you saw a bug and went, oh, bug. Or something. <laughs> Playing Hollow Knight. Hmm. I, it, it's a game that I've wanted for a while and I keep looking at it and going, I don't have time to play that. <laughs> but it does look very good. Maybe I'll catch one of your streams sometime and watch you playing it and live vicariously through you. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to play play computer games, right? So what brings you in here, OK Charms? Were you lured in by my lava bug? Is how I get by. Yeah. I do have time for games sometimes. I am fortunate. There are a lot of bugs. Ah. So you thought you would look for more bugs? <laughs> Well, we are painting up a miniature for Suzerain. This is a lava beetle. Uh, apparently it was once upon a time a regular old beetle. And then some really nasty force called the Tempest decided to corrupt it and turn it into this thing. So, ah, friends that paint minis. Yes. I think everybody's got a friend that paints minis. These days, you know. At least one. But I paint minis a lot. But 
yeah, this one's for a, a role playing game. So, if you are interested in role playing games, uh, this one is for Suzerain. If you've not heard of it, you can do exclamation Suzerain and it will come up with a bunch of info, mostly links for you to follow if you wanted to investigate some more. Assuming Streamlabs doesn't shout at somebody about it anyway. <laughs> it does tend to do that. We're just adding some green to the base to make the lava look more, well, bright, really. <laughs> Yeah, we've went, we've gone for a hello, po poser ninja. It took me a moment then. <laughs> Cooking dinner and then going to eat and stream. <laughs> um, it's terrible when you go when you're lurking. You know, you go F A K A F K. Ugh. God's AFK for something and you come back and suddenly the stream's changed. <laughs> Mostly Warhammer. Yeah. Do you game much yourself? Okay charms or uh, I mean other than computer games. Obviously you play computer games but I meant you know do you do tabletop gaming? Have you had a bash? Lots of Warhammer Poser Ninja. Mm. Uh, I don't do much Warhammer. Uh, not my thing. I mean, I'll paint it. Because um, I do commission painting, so, you know, if somebody paid me to paint some, I would paint it. But I don't play it. Oh, no. Yeah. Big dog in the mini world. GW and their ah oh, Star Wars Legion. Mm. I don't have any of that. I've got some Malifaux figures um, that are part painted. I keep getting distracted from them. And given the fact that I can't go out to play anyway, uh, <laughs> kind of puts a dampener on my desire to paint them, or more to point, the urgency to paint them. Well, I did get some uh, base toppers for them. Ah, yeah, like Gangs of the Undercity. That's coming soon. That is... Um, I've got some minis for that to paint up tomorrow. Ah, yes. Yeah, I mean, I could play, play with my husband, but we have two very young children as well, so... Um, it kind of they kind of get in the way of being able to game, and by the time they've gone to bed, it, we're so exhausted, like ugh, too tired to to focus on learning rules for a game and and applying them correctly. And ugh. Um, but yeah, I, I did buy some base toppers for my Malifaux minis. But I'm doing a bonus stream tomorrow. I don't normally stream on Sundays, but I'm doing a stream tomorrow to paint up some fragging unicorns minis. I have two of them that they sent me to paint up um, in preparation for their Kickstarter, which is really soon. Hence why I'm doing a bonus stream. Uh, their Kickstarter launches on the 15th of July, I think it is. So I have to have them painted up and preferably back to the moon America before then. So tomorrow evening. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that yeah, that would help. 
Uh, but yeah, tomorrow evening, my time, BST, British summer time, um, at 7.30, I think I said, I will be streaming, painting some Gangs of the Undercity minis. They're really cool. Um, they're actually also very good quality miniatures. I was a little surprised when I got them. Not just the sculpts, but the casts as well. Really good casts. I was I was very surprised, very pleasantly surprised. Because you can't have to get onto some rubbish these days. Um, but now these ones are really good. I'll finish doing the green, and then I'll grab them and give you a little peek. The base needs to dry before I can do any more. But we're going to put a dark green wash over this. And I suspect I may end up backing the Kickstarter when it launches myself um, because the minis are very nice. And mostly for the miniatures. I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to want the game because. I don't have a lot of time for playing war games. We have a bunch around that we don't play much of. But the miniatures could be really useful for things. Um, MMK, the um, boss of uh, Savage Mojo, for want of a better term, the mastermind, um, <laughs> thinks they'd be really good for suzerain as well so we might end up getting some for this stream a little bit more green into there and get it across and we'll give you a sneak peek of the dragon unicorns minis That I will be painting up tomorrow. Right. That's the green base. So adding in the green has actually made the reds and, and oranges and yellows really sing. And it's also helped with the carapace as well. Right, I'll go grab those Frank and Unicorn minis. Now, I haven't got around to priming them yet, but these are the minis that they sent me. So this guy is, apparent, I think his name is Mormagul. Um, and he's quite a dapper looking uh, cybernetic samurai. He's, I believe he's an assassin, uh, but he's even got like a cybernetic jaw. Hold on. If I can... Yeah, he's 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 quite dapper with his waistcoat. He's even got pressed trousers, so he's got the front uh, the front press on his trousers. Very posh. With his with his um, cybernetically enhanced katana, or is at least very decorative. But yeah, cybernetic arms. And we also have um, this this one's the Lord Jack. And he's one of their basically police bot miniatures for gangs of the Undercity. So I gave him a couple of extra bollards. And they're like he's holding the line or something. Somebody's breached the perimeter and he's uh, acting on that. Yeah, we'll be painting those up tomorrow evening. Um, but yeah, this sort of chap... Ain't no match for a good solid kill bar. But yeah, this, this sort of chap would be really good for Suzerain as well. He's very um, cyberpunk. Also, Killbot! Killbot! <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's tomorrow's stream. Uh, possibly Mondays as well if I don't get them both done in the same stream. Um, they're very detailed models. And I, I do want to do them good service. I don't like painting up such detailed models uh, with a low quality paint job if I can help it. So I 
I may it may be two streams. Uh, I've kind of already scheduled in and one off for Monday as well. So yeah, that's the plan for tomorrow evening, which is quite exciting. Okay, so we're going to try and get a dark green wash in here. So I have forest green. We're going to make a wash out of this. So we want one drop of this. Let's be careful not to put it in that one because that's where I put my uh, metallic highlight. <laughs> Three drops of we're gonna make up more <laughs> just looking at it and thinking that's not gonna be enough now I didn't make the green fully opaque on this but that's okay because I'd done it in the swamp gray underneath so it adds a bit of extra dimension and texture I'm fine with that I might touch up a little bit around the edges. Um, but sometimes I don't like to go fully opaque and even with my colours. It adds more character if you don't. Okay, thank you very much for the raid charm. Um, and you take care of yourself and go enjoy your food. I hope you have something tasty. And thank you very much for coming in. Uh, maybe I zombie you could drop a shout out for OK Charms so anybody that was in here can go over and follow. If you don't mind, eyes on for you. Thank you very much. There we go. So as a thank you for the raid, uh, definitely get over there and go follow OK Charms. And uh, you'll definitely see what, uh, what the streaming's like. The Hollow Knight. Or whatever you have to be playing next time. <laughs> so I'm adding a wash over this. So I'm going to bring out that texture. There we go, like that. Bit more there. So I'm glad I made up extra because I'm going to need it, I think. I am being quite heavy because the texture is quite fine. Um, and it doesn't matter if it looks a little patchy, it is the ground. There we are. Right. So we can leave that to dry. And while we do, we can finish up down the bridge, down the back. So we'll add some more white into that, I think. First and foremost, make sure that it's bright enough all the way down to really bring out the colour that we're going to put in there. Like that. Just going to add a little more 
more smoothness to these ones as well with my orange we can go back over the tips of these ones with the white give it some extra white hot on the tips of the larger ones we'll go over the tips of the um, big ones as well like that So we are just waiting for the base to dry. Um, is that turbo dot metallic for the shell? Yes, it is. This one is molten mantle, and I've used some motherload to add some highlighting. So that extra glisten in places is from motherload, which I've just lightly brushed on. Uh, but it gives it that extra shine. Yeah, I have. So, it's, so that's the base one that I use, the Molten Mantle. No, none of them do. They really don't, but they look amazing. And I found that the Mother Load uh, provides a really nice highlight. I've never brushed it on before. I've only ever airbrushed it. Um, so his horn looks a little like ice lollies. Wait, what? <laughs> Um, so this this is a snake that I did. Now this one was wavelength. So this is it without um, the mother load highlight. And here I added a light airbrushing of the mother load to create that extra highlight. So it really adds extra shift as well. Um, but I found it was really good for that. And I did some on the head up here as well. Um, but yeah, this guy was entirely turbo doped because <laughs> they're brilliant. Um, and the, the golden was, um, let me just reduce the exposure a bit more. There we go. So the golden effect was uh, just the mother load. You can actually see it under the chin where it's mostly just mother load. Um, so I used the mother load and then I went over it with uh, amazingly I went over it with this which works really well as a wash <laughs> but it, it gave it a real golden sheen I thought it looked fantastic so I ended up with a slightly golden bellied snake uh, but yeah the um, it adds a nice sort of highlight to it so they work great over each other. Yeah, they do work pretty good for that. I mean, I'm not a fan of the contrast paints in general. Um, I find them quite hit and miss. I really like the Skeleton Horde. Um, but I, this one, the Seigel Brown, I find is way too opaque. Uh, I did a whole model with just contrast paints over a base coat to see how it would look and was uh, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not a fan of them really like I say I find that some of them like the cycle brown is just too too opaque it's not translucent enough um, and things like the skeleton horde this one's all right because you want it you want a lot of the base color to come through I, I did buy a few so I have snake bite leather that one works pretty well um, the dark oath flesh again that's kind of like the skeleton horde I based all of my uh, sil sylvaneth in agros dunes through an airbrush and it came out good and a lot of browns are, are good black and white yeah 
Yeah, the, well, like I say, this one I found to be way too opaque. My two favourite ones are the Skeleton Horde and the Blue. Because the, this, this uh, Levi Leviathan Blue is actually really quite good. That gets a really good contrast. Um, I found that uh, the blue is really good. Um, I found the yellow was too dirty for my liking. I'm sorry if you want like a golden yellow. Yeah, you, you can get some really good results with them, but I think the I think the cycle brown needs thinning. Yeah, <laughs> because of her in spite of. Yeah, I think the cycle brown needs thinning and this kind of looks a bit dirty. I, I kind of feel like you need to highlight over this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't think using them as they're sold is the way to go. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I have seen a bunch of really nice stuff. Like I say, the, the Skeleton Horde goes really well. Yeah, not just rely on the contrast. Yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I tend to use the Skeleton Horde almost like a wash. Because it works beautifully for that. Uh, the, the yellow one's not bad for... You definitely have to do it over white. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, the flesh one that I've got is uh, more red. Same sort of effect, but a more of a pinkish red. Um, I don't actually have any examples around, because uh, I don't use them very much. I tend to just end up making my own washers a lot of the time. Um, I'm just going to go with some red down the ridge. We don't want it too bright down here. Um, I can't see vague pinks. They blend in, so if it's light, I won't see it, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, the, well, the dark, the, the sort of, um, the flesh tone one. I think if you did that, yeah, I think if you did that one over white... Um, it would come up with quite a nice flesh tone. I think it would look weird over grey. So I know that quite a lot of contrast paints go over grey. That's something that people tend to do with them. Use the thumb. There we go. Um, I'll see if I can get it to yeah it's kind of like a dirty pink for one of a better term hold on let me show you I'll see if I can get it to show up on my nail um, so that's what it is in the pot it looks quite brown um, but actually when you apply it it's quite a reddish colour. I don't know if you can see that if you've got moderate colour blindness, uh, but it's kind of a it's kind of a reddish colour. But it's definitely translucent enough. Yeah, it just looks like brown. Yeah, it, it is quite. It's quite dirty. It's like a really dirty pink. Um, it is quite brown. It's like I say, it's very heavy on the red. Whereas the the skeleton horde is, um, I think that tends more to the yellow, whereas this is more to the red. Yeah. 
So is it just soft pinks then that you can't see? Like something like this cat. <laughs> That's pink. That's very pink. Dark blues and purples. Mm. Yeah, you might struggle with the blue then. The the Levadian blue. Le Levidum blue or whatever it is. Yeah, this is a this is a really bright pink. Um yeah, if you struggle with dark blues, you might not be able to see the Levidon. Oh, let me see if I can. I'm still waiting for this base to dry. <laughs> the wash was quite heavy. Is that... Uh, yes, it was. <laughs> dark Oath Flesh. Good guess. Um, yeah, it was the contrast one. I don't know if they do it as an actual paint. Um, but yeah, this is the Levidon blue. It's quite, it's quite a nice blue, actually, as well. Let me see if I can... Let's get rid of the. We'll pick a different nail. Um, so it's quite. It is quite a dark blue. It's got quite a purple tone to it. So I bet my nail just looks black. <laughs> but when you apply it to um, texture, it really does highlight and, and sink into the things. Yeah. It's it's not a bad for it's not a bad one. Yeah, very very black. Yeah, um, yeah, it's definitely blue though. It doesn't help because my nails are pink underneath, obviously. But if I did it over white, it might be a bit clearer that it's blue. I wonder if that base is dried. No, I don't have a hairdryer. Um, oh, eyes. I haven't done the eyes. We can do those green. We'll do them in the same green that I did the base. Okay. So I dotted on some white for the eyes. Oh, it's freaking fluff on my brush. There we go. Just so that I had a nice light base for adding some colour. There we go, my bug has eyes. <laughs> I don't want to imagine painting with a colour deficiency. Painting without is hard enough. <laughs> you must be a boss. Well, I bet you have some very interesting colour schemes as a result. Yeah, the, the turbo dogs are quite dark on camera. If I brighten it up, you can see it a bit better. But then it, it blows out all the spines. Ugh, I can't really balance cameras. But yeah, that's made it very larvery. That's actually probably closer to what I see it as, actually. I maybe made it a bit dark for some of the whites and stuff that I was doing. But yeah, the blues... Very, very dark. Still looks dark, pretty much black, maybe a bit purple. <laughs> and then the. I've rubbed off most of that now, it's come off. Yeah, I, I struggle enough with painting without having a colour deficiency. <laughs> so I can't imagine. It, it must be, I suppose, stressful at times. Especially given how judgmental some people can be. Okay. Um, I think we are pretty much just waiting for the base to dry. We can maybe add a bit of orange in there. 
this will make it a little brighter as we come up here. There we go. Maybe a little bit down here too. But he's got a really bright bum. <laughs> wasn't me. Uh, some random someone just gifted me a sub to a channel I've never watched randomly. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I I have subs to channels I've been on once. Thank you very much for the follow, Pose Ninja. I have subs to channels I've been in once. Um, and there's somebody's channel I've been in a few times. I keep getting subbed gift subs. Um, if you pre if you do exclamation Sue's mini, it will come up with the link to the original miniature. There we go. Thank you very much. Um, I have modified it massively but if you you if you go to the site you'll be able to see the difference um i have modified it quite a lot i i chopped it up i feel slightly mean about it And that one up as well. There we go. Right. So I've added a little more brightness around the edges of that um, seam so it looks a little less bland. Yep, it is intended for some Sue's Rain. Uh, Sue's Rain Legends. We've got the scrolling banner. It's by Savage Mojo. Um, if you were interested, you could do exclamation Sue's Rain and it will come up with links to their social media stuff. Their website, blog. They have a YouTube channel as well. Um, pretty cool little setting. By little, I mean it's ginormous. <laughs> There's quite a lot to that setting. Uh, but it's a big multiverse as well, so... But this is a supported stream, so. Savage Mojo and I have teamed up to do this. I'm not much of a tabletop player. I just started painting models about a year ago. Ah. So what are you painting? Screen? Screen? Screen. Screen. I'm tempted by screen. Screen sounds nice. Screen. So what models have you been painting? And do you do colour schemes as wacky as this? And if not, why not? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, that's a good question. Minis will model kits, like um, model plane kits, model train kits, model cars. Do you get model car kits? <laughs> I'm sure that's a thing too. Add some orange around the feet so we can add some of the fieriness. Fieriness. If you have an Instagram, you're more than welcome to share uh, Instagram links. It, it is whitelisted, so the bot will not get angry. We can maybe have a bit of a look. Like screen. I've painted a... Oh, okay, like screen. Okay. I've painted a huge walking tank from Kickstarter. I mainly paint Warhammer Tau stuff now. Love the kit bashing. Ah, okay. I don't have much in that department. Um, in terms of 
metal style stuff. I mostly paint fantasy, so I have painted up a giant spider and freehanded a scary face on it for reasons. It tickled me mostly. Um, we added some slimy looking pools of slime. Um, this guy, these these are all Reaper miniatures that I have. With some goo in his mouth. There's slobber. Codename Colossus Mark One. Or MKI. MKL? That's Mark One, right? <laughs> Codename Colossus. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, fan fantasy minis are my thing. Mostly. This is kind of where my painting sings. Um, and uh, one of my favourite paint ups was this chap. Yeah, I mean, actually just painting different things can really help advance your painting skill because you do different textures and stuff. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, if you're doing large flat panels, it's tricky to get shading and highlighting in. Um, in some ways, you might be as well off picking up things like this to practice painting skills on. Um, because having things like textures, so... The fur is really good for learning how to do dry brushing. Um, th like all these raised edges make it really easy to highlight. So these are actually all sculpted in, these edges. So it makes it really easy to pick out where to highlight and things like that. So you can learn the form and structure of that kind of thing. I find that these sort of models uh, are a lot easier to learn that kind of thing on than big flat panels. That you might get with like Tau. Um, I don't know if Tau specifically have big flat panel panels, but um, I think this this is the smallest miniature I've painted to date. She was tiny. She was very difficult, even for me. I really struggled, and I'm. I mean, I don't put a huge amount of time and effort into my mini painting. Um, I could probably do better if I bothered to spend more time. Um, but I like the level that I paint to. Yeah, boxy and flat. But yeah, um, do you prime with rattle cans screen? And what, what colours do you use for, for priming? <laughs> the one you're most proud of, fair enough. Um, because if you even if you prime with rattle rattle cans, you can do um, what's called zenithal priming. Um, let's see if I've got an example. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you have the budget for it, get black and white. And so what you do, and you can get this, which shows you where all your highlights are. So from above, he's just white. Yet from the side, you can start to see all the details, all the ridge lines of his clothes, where the shadows would fall. Because I primed him, I primed him black first, the entire model. And then from directly above, um, I primed him white. Uh, because he's at an angle, I also primed him a little bit from this sort of angle. So that way I'd catch his face. But this is called zenithal priming. Um, and odds are you won't even see this, uh, you know, when you do it. But it gives you an idea of where your highlights are and where your shadows are for you to work. So as I tilt it more, you can see that it's pretty much black underneath. Um, and I've, I'm... A lot of the time, 
with the paints I use, they're so opaque, they cover all this, but it still gives me something to work from to determine where all the um, highlights and stuff are. Yes, we do all start somewhere. Um, do I have him on hand? Mm. I don't know if I do. I might have put him away. Ah, I put him up there. This one was my first mini. This is the first mini I ever painted, um, which, you know, compared to my fallen Boris. Yeah, you're more than welcome to Pose a Ninja. We like people sharing their stuff. If it's on Instagram, you can just post links. If it's elsewhere, you'll need to get a permit from I Zombie You. <laughs> yes. If you avoid taking 10 year breaks, it's definitely easy to improve. But yeah. So my first model versus... Um, I painted this guy very recently, so... Big difference. It just takes time and practice, really. Um... The, the basic the way you get better is paint more. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's have a look and see what Pose Ninja's up to. Ah. Oh, I like those wings. They're really good. I like that transition. That's very nice. You're very tidy. You're very tidy work. I like that. Yeah, the earlier one is nice as well. I can see the the amount of development in the painting, and where you where you shaded and and stuff. That's really nice. I like that pose and ninja. But I do like those wings. Those wings look great. <laughs> yes, very tidy work. Yeah, wet blending is tricky with um, with acrylic paints. They dry really quickly. And I, I have acrylic paints, so the install paints, as brilliant as they are, dry incredibly fast. Yeah, I have some, I have some slow-mo retard medium. <laughs> and eight shades of colour. Um, I have some slow-mo retarder medium. And this, it, it works pretty well. But I found it makes my paint oily. It's really weird. So I might see if I can find a different one. It is for acrylics as well. I mean, it's not the acrylic. Um, yeah, I might try that one. I, I've kind of been looking around. I mean, I've got... I've got a couple of different glaze mediums. I've got a matte media. I've got varieties of mediums. Um, a lot of the time I, I just default to this stuff these days. Um, it, it's not really great. F I mean, yeah. This one, this Water Plus is brilliant. Uh, it's better than, it is better than just using water uh, for thinning paints. It's really, really good. Uh, I find this or the latest one. Yeah. Yeah, I buy bottles of distilled water for my wet palette, but <laughs> yeah, going from a cup. Um, but I tend to thin with this stuff, the water plus. I mean, it also comes in a drop bottle, so it's really handy. Um, so it's actually it's also really easy to measure how many drops of water you've got to drops of paint. Um, but this stuff is is really good. I mean, um, and they do it in really big bottles as well. This is the 50 ml bottle. I think they do up to 200 mils. Let's have a look at screens. Ah, okay, yep. Yeah. 
White is a very bold choice. <laughs> That's very tidy, though. I'm actually quite impressed by the shading you've managed to get on the white, because a lot of people really struggle with white. That is nice and tidy, nice and tidy, very tidy work. And I do like your spot highlighting on the face, the um, eyes, I suppose, are the equivalent. Let's have a look at your latest one. Again, with the bold white, you're going for a white scheme. That's that is very bold. <laughs> Good job on the sinking of the colours between the armour, the black. That That's come out really nicely on her. Your latest model. Or, I, I don't know, maybe. Maybe not your latest. I think it's just providing me in the random orders now. <laughs> yes. This one. I only ever use this one now. I have a couple of other whites around and I bought this one and I have never gone back. I will not use any other white. This stuff covers perfectly and it is it, it is already it's already pre-thinned. It could go through an airbrush without any additives. It's that thin and yet it covers brilliantly. Um Yeah, um, but this one's really good. Uh, I'll show you. Uh, let me grab my palette. Uh, this is Instar. If you do exclamation Instar, it should come up with a link to their web store. Um, but yeah, it's actually already thin. Um, so that's just one drop of the white. And you can see I can move it around really easily. <laughs> yeah, this is... Uh, yeah. I mean, actually, I have done it where they've been all in neat lines because I was doing colour transitions. Uh, but I was doing a lot of mixing and you end up with, you end up with tons of paint when you mix. It's terrible. Um, but yeah, so the edge of the base has been turbo dorked. It's really dark. Um, but the white... That's one coat of white. And it's thin and it's, you know, it, it is, it, it applies perfectly and beautifully. Oh, you can make one screen. Um, kitchen towel. Um, this, this is my kitchen towel that I've been using for wiping my brush on. It's absolutely drenched, but this is just kitchen paper. A few layers of that, um, yeah, baking parchment in a plastic tub. Uh, Hinamatsu is in the box, but yeah, I can show Hinamatsu. But yeah, this is so that's one coat that's dry because it dries that quickly, and even with a second coat, it's already covering rapidly. So that's two coats of white. We're we're already a lot of the way to um, full opacity. And this is a translucent paint. So the pure ranges from Instar are translucent. Yeah. Uh, but Instar's a small British company. So in, in about four coats, you can cover black, a black primer. Yeah. Yeah, acrylics are a bum for thinning. White is the worst. So the lighter the colour, the chalkier it will become as you thin it. Um, it's just the nature of the pigments. In order for it to be light, there needs to be less pigment usually. 
Um, the Instar paints are really good because they're high pigment. Um, stuff like Gloss Plus from them will make it more opaque. Uh, but the, the Water Plus that I use is designed to not separate the particle, to distribute the particles evenly. That's what it does. Um, whereas water doesn't, which is why you get all the separating. This will separate eventually, but it distributes the pigments more evenly, so you get a better coverage. But yeah, that's like four coats. It might need one more, because I, I overdid it <laughs> a bit too soon. Um, but yeah, the Instar White is my favourite. It doesn't go chalky. Um, it covers nicely. It's not thick. It's not dense. Um, I will grab Hinamatsu and show you. Because I absolutely love these paints. The, the white is basically what sold them to me. I have no idea what Lamian, La Lamian Media is like from Citadel. I've never owned it. Uh, but the Water Plus is actually just... It, it's basically water. I think it has something in it that allows the distribution, but it is like 99% water. Um, where is she? There she is. So this is my Hinamatsu model that I did. And I was able to cover... So I painted, I airbrushed her, she was primed in black um, satin varnish, uh, primer even. And I was able to coat, get the white coverage in four coats. So the white, all the white coverage was done in four coats or less. Let me see if I can really focus on her. It's, it's focusing on the water bottle at the back. Hold on. My camera's a bit a bit dodgy like that. It likes to focus on the background. There we go. Um, but yeah, that one focus. That one was like four coats over black. So the colour of her hair is what it was initially. And thank you very much. <laughs> she's she took quite a bit of work, but this is all Instar paints. This was one hundred percent Instar paints that I did. But yeah, the the Alpha White, the pure white, brilliant white. Um, I mean, I started with white for this, but I used the white on this guy as well, and the coverage is so good. It's really smooth. You don't get the chalkiness. You don't get the clumping. Um, you get nice smooth coats over the mini. It is such a good paint. Um, I think if I order some more, I'm going to get a bigger bottle of the white. It is hands down the best white I've ever had. I don't think I'll buy another brand. It's, it is really smooth. But so far I've, I've really enjoyed all their paints. Um, their whole alpha range. So these are all uh, Instar Alpha. Um, the whole alpha range is pre-thinned. You don't need to thin it to apply it. You, so the water plus is only essential if you're making glazers and washers. Uh, otherwise, you just put it on your palette and paint with it. Um, but yeah, I have most of them. I, I, I'd, well, I say most of them. I have a bunch of them. Um, but they are absolutely excellent paints. They really are. Um, they're really high pigment as well, so unlike the so the orange one of the oranges I was using is this one, the orange fire, um, and it just it doesn't cover it. It's like a somewhere between a wash and a glaze. Um, 
but even their yellow, their pure yellow covers really well. And the good stuff. Definitely the good stuff. Right, this has definitely dried. So we'll add a bit more yellow around the bottom. In fact, we're going to use this yellow. If I can get it to... Um, I'll tell you what, I'll bring my palette over as well. Let's see if I can get to... Oh, that's all right. So this is the yellow that I'm using. This is the pure yellow. And you can see that it's very thin. And yet we'll get actually quite good coverage with it because it's quite... It's got a high pigment count. Um, whereas the Vallejo Air ones don't they don't have a very high pigment count so they're thin and they don't have a lot of good coverage we can just add some of that in around the bottom and it's even covering the orange and the reds and the brown there but i've got to be careful not to get too much on the green and you know i'm sure you know how bad yellows are as well or can be and this stuff covers really well. Although, my advice with yellow, never paint it over black. <laughs> Otherwise you'll end up with a green. I'm not sure why. Apparently pink's a really good base for yellow. But there we go. We've added in the yellow around the bottom. So we'll go back around to this side and we'll use the the orange fire, this one. It's I've not thinned it, it's just on the palette. And it barely covers, it's like a glaze. I'm not sure how you'd paint with that, to be honest. It's that thin. I mean, don't get me wrong, I quite like the Vallejo paints. Uh, and some of the Air range is nice. I've got their Dead White. This was another one I'd tried before I got the Instar one. Just terrible. Really bad. Very chalky. Um, barely any coverage. Yeah, I mean, they have their uses. I mean, like I say, they're, they're good for glazing. <laughs> but you can make glazes out of other paints as well. There we go. Go all the way up the legs with that glaze. But yeah, lovely. Lovely thin paints. Like I say, the yellow's nice and thin as well. And the red and the white. So all these, this one's not. This is a mix. This is an AK. Uh, this is um, in star as well, the red. But that one's been on the palette for a while. It's dried out. But yeah, a lot of what I use is the in star. But you know, I've, I've got some foundry. I use them. I've got AKs. I've got uh, some MIG now. I still use the Vallejos. You know, I, I mean, I, I use a variety of paints, but I find that I end up using the Instars on every single model. Not least because the white's amazing. <laughs> okay. So we have done with that bit. Let's see if we can base this guy and then call it for the night because it is quite late and I am tired. So, because we have done, I think we've done pretty good on him. I'm, I'm quite happy with how he looks. 
I think he looks quite nice. I'm, I'm pleased with that. So, basic materials. Let's add some flower tufts. I have not used these yet. So we're going to lift the camera up a little bit. Mostly so that you've got a bit, I've got a bit more room and hopefully still see the model. So we've got some flower tufts. Uh, from Rival Crafts. I like their flower tufts. Their basing materials. So we'll put some of these on. I got a mixed pack. Okay, so for the lava bug, I think we might go with some little red ones actually. Hmm. Oh, we might also, I've actually got some of these ones as well. I might add a couple of those grass tufts. Move that out of the way. Right, let's decide where to put the grass tufts first. But I'm going to try and flesh out the base without much work because I'm lazy. I'm not that lazy, but yeah, I like the tufts because you don't have to do much work with them. So we'll go with this one. They're basically glue dots if you've never used them before. And they stick quite. They stick pretty well. So we'll get that one under there. Um, you don't need glue. They'll stick to the base. You can just squish them down as well. So I'm just... But yeah, they're, they're a good way of upping your basing game with little work. <laughs> I don't want to add too many of these because I want to add in flower tufts. So we'll get a nice... We'll get this big one here. I think. And get that in... Mm. Yeah, we'll get that in behind a leg. We'll get in there. Uh, oh, I've got. A, I've got a toothpick. That'll do. I'm gonna press the glue dot down. Uh, so these are pre-made. They come like this. Like I say, they're just glue dots, really. You can just stick them down. Adds a bit more to your basing. I don't want to do too much to the basing. I might add a bit of flock. So we've got a couple of tufts. Let's add more flowers than tufts. Um, grass tufts, I think. Because I quite want to use the flowers. And the flowers are fairly dinky. So we'll add in... I think we'll go with we'll go with the lilac one um, just here. There we go. Um, I do want a red one. We'll go with this red one here. So these are actually really small. They're quite, they're very small by comparison to the um, other ones that I have, the other tufts. Um, yeah, her, her scenic stuff is really good. Rival crafts. I think we'll get another one in just here under this foot. Um, maybe um, maybe a maybe a white one. We'll tuck it in behind that one. Yeah, there's a really good place for it. I like. So we're trying to build up the base, make it look less bland.
Um, let's add another red one. Now it's got a bit of blue on that one. That's quite good. So we'll put that one. We'll put that one in there. Um, like that. I think we're going to have to add something in there as well. We'll, make, we'll get one of these mixed ones. We'll put one of these ones in. Uh, we'll go with that really dinky one there. That can go in under his leg. Lovely guy traipsing through a field of flowers. Oh yes. Probably incinerating most of it as he goes. There we go. Some pretty flowers. I really like those. Those are nice. Let's see if we can get to zoom in and give you a good look at the flowers. Try again. There we go. So these are the flowers from Rival Crafts. They're quite dainty. They come in different. So they they have mixed lengths built into the flowers. They're not all the same length. Which is really nice. So like these, these tufts are quite consistent in their height. It looks like somebody's been over with a lawnmower. Um, which is okay. But it is nice to get the different lengths. I mean, you get the odd one that's a bit longer, but it, it doesn't look quite right. Um, you know, we can also get a good look at the spines, that ridge line down the back. So I added some dark red, some deep red in the middle. So we've got a nice flow of colour. And then we've got the big horns at the front. Down onto the larvary, larvary looking beak. Gave it green eyes. You can see the larva effects on the spines of the legs. We can see that mother load shimmer on the carapace as well. But yeah. I think I think it's come out pretty good. I may add a little more flocking to the base, um, but I think, given the fact that it's twenty-five to twelve here, <laughs> oh boy, uh, I may have to do that another day. <laughs> um, so let's have a look, see who's online. <laughs> Because, um, yeah, but I do have some flocking options. Are we ready? Um, so I could use, I might use some of this around the base because that'll add some nice. <laughs> yeah, the kids will let us have a nice lie in. Yeah, that could look quite nice around the base. Add some of that to it. I could just go with some flat out green flock. Hmm. Or maybe some patchy grass. don't know. Maybe. Might even add some more flowers in. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for coming by anyway, guys. And I uh, really appreciate the raids that I got. Let's swing on over and say hi to Gridlock. Um, 
he does 3D sculpting, miniature sculpting. And thank you very much for the follow screen. Um, he does uh, miniature painting and 3D miniature sculpting. Uh, I think he's doing some mini painting today. So go on over there, give him a follow, go check out his stuff. Um, and uh, I will catch you next time. I am doing a bonus stream tomorrow at 7.30 BS p.m. BST. So British summer time, uh, 7.30 p.m. I will try to add it to my schedule so it will come up on the of the schedule so that way you guys will hopefully not miss it <laughs> but thank you very much for coming in and uh catch you tomorrow maybe and happy fourth of july to american friends while it's still fourth of july <laughs> bye